and I won't back down. Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View Ladies Tea. We've got a great show for you tonight, but before we get started, I want to quickly tell you about one of our sponsors, Swiss America. Our country is facing so many problems these days under Joe Biden that the last thing any of us need is more to worry about. Unfortunately, we have to fear losing our freedom and privacy with the Democrats' new push for a digital dollar that could allow the government to tell us what we can and cannot buy with our own hard-earned money. That's why I'm encouraging every one of you tuning into the show right now to get The Secret War on Cash, an insightful report created by my friends at Swiss America. With this report, you're going to learn how to protect yourself from the threats facing our freedom and your hard-earned money. The report is available right now to my listeners free of charge. Just call 800-289-2646 or visit www.swissamerica.com slash Trump for your free report. Tonight, we are joined by Landon Starbuck, whose new documentary, The War on Children, is out right now on X. You've got to go watch this, as well as conservative commentator Carrie Prejean Baller. Uh, Landon and Carrie, welcome. Um, look, we're going to get to that documentary very soon, Landon, because I want you to tell our audience all about it and what they're doing to prevent people from seeing it. But first, I want to jump in just very quickly and talk about some polling. Supposedly, we think uh, and we understand Joe Biden is the Democrats nominee for president of the United States. I say it every time. I don't know how you run Joe Biden right now in 2024 because his polling numbers, ladies, continue to go down in the latest NBC News poll. And let's face it, NBC is not going to do us any favors by sugarcoating anything for Donald Trump. Trump is beating Biden 47 to 42. That's just overall. That's a nine point swing for Donald Trump since July of last year. That is major. Here's some ba- bad news for Biden as well. His overall job approval rating hovers in the 30s. Right now, it's somewhere around 37 percent. No incumbent president has ever been reelected with an approval rating that low. Disapproval, 60 percent. Quite frankly, should be 100 percent. But I digress. His job approval rating with certain voting blocks that the Democrats count on, not great either. Hispanics, 35 percent. Young voters, 29 percent. Wow. Independents, 27 percent. 77 percent of the country says we are on the right track. And this one, I think, is a big deal because this swing is 16 points. When you ask people about the competence and effectiveness as a leader, It went from Donald Trump trailing Joe Biden by 9% to right now Donald Trump up 48% to 32% on Joe Biden. So, Carrie, I look at numbers like this, and as as much as, you know, polls kind of, they, they change all the time, they are all trending in the same direction for Joe Biden, and it isn't up. They're going down. People, it seems like every single day, thank God, are waking up and realizing this guy is the wrong person to be in the Oval Office, is the wrong guy for the country. Do you believe that Joe Biden will ultimately be the Democrats nominee come November of this year? Absolutely not. I think that's going to be Michael, I mean, I'm sorry, Michelle Obama, um, or it's going to be Gavin Newsom, greasy Gavin from my state here in California. And let me just tell you this. I live in crazy communist California and I talk to people all day long. I got two kids. I am out and about all day long and I am not afraid to talk to moms and dads about what they believe politically. And let me tell you, even the most liberal people are saying that they will not vote for Joe Biden. Wow. It's a big, it's a big deal. Landon, this, this stuff is real. And it's funny because I actually had dinner last night with a group of people, a lot of whom are from either New York or California. And they're kind of saying the same thing to me as what Carrie just pointed out, which is even the most hardened Democrats, these are people who have never even considered in a million years that they would ever vote Republican, are looking at Joe Biden and they're saying, I I can't vote for this guy. 
In fact, a lot of them, whether, and they all have different issues. Some of it started whenever they started allowing men to compete against women in sports. I know that was a big, big issue for uh, a lot of these folks. Some of it had to do with Israel and the way that this president has been a total, complete and utter failure when it comes to supporting our closest Middle Eastern ally, Israel. Uh, some of it has to do with the southern border and what they see around their communities right now all over this country. They are all saying, I know people and I I, I talk to people every day who are saying, I'm not voting for Joe Biden. In fact, these people are saying they're voting for Donald Trump, Landon, that that is a huge deal. And I think it's interesting because, you know, the tradition is that the president of the United States will always do a Super Bowl interview. This is something that they typically always do. Second year in a row, old Joe uh, is not going to be doing the Super Bowl interview. Hmm, interesting how that works out. The White House says, we hope the viewers enjoy watching what they tuned in for the game. Okay. Wow, maybe it has something to do with those uh, airstrikes in Syria and Iraq the other day. I mean, it, this guy's a slow boil to insanity. And I think more people are starting to wake up and realize that. And I totally agree with Kerry. I don't think that he's going to last. I think they're going to run Greasy Gavin. Um, and there's a lot of signs, you know, internally pointing to that when someone typically prepares to run. I mean, you start seeing funds move. You start seeing training. I mean, look at look at his wife with the community schools. Um, so I, I think that that is what they're going to do. I don't know how they're going to do it or when they're going to do it, but that is my bet. Yeah, and I, I mentioned this last week on the show. Fairly recently, within the past year, the DNC changed a rule that would would say that anybody, the, the people of this country should be able to choose who the Democrat um, nominee is. You know, it used to be that they would have to vote for it. And right now, the DNC could just appoint any person they want. Carrie Baller, you're up for, for uh, running for Democrats uh, and you're running for president of the United States. If the DNC wants it. Why would you change a rule like that out of the blue? Why right now would you need to do something like that? Quite frankly, it is the least democratic thing possible. It subverts the will of the entire country or at least the Democrat voters to just say, ah, we could just pick somebody out, anybody and tell you this is who the nominee for president is. It's kind of wild. And I'm like, mm, I don't know why you would change a rule like that if you weren't very concerned with the candidate you guys had, Joe Biden, and you weren't banking on plugging somebody else in there. And I think everybody, the, the obvious thing is obviously that Gavin Newsom, as you both just mentioned, Michelle Obama. I tend to think, and I thought about Michelle Obama a lot lately, she's got a pretty good life. And let's face it, the Obamas have been in charge of everything going on the past three years in this country. We know Joe Biden isn't really the person who's calling the shots around there. So I'm kind of leaning towards Gavin Newsom right now. It's a it's a wild time. Uh, Carrie, what's the take uh, with Californians if it might be a Gavin Newsom running? I'm telling you, the talk of the town is I'm even even the most liberal Democrats. I live in an area where it's very liberal. And <laughs> these people are saying if it is Gavin Newsom, if it is Joe Biden, absolutely not. They will vote. Wow. They will vote Trump, even though they say, you know what, I thought I'd never vote for that man. They are going to vote Trump in 2024 because they saw how Gavin Newsom ran this state in during COVID, especially. What a hypocrite he was. I won't get yeah. into the details. You guys know the details of that. The French laundry. Remember that? Oh, yeah. 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 And then his kids are all unmasked. But, oh, your kids need to mask up. Your kids yeah. need to get, get the jab. So I think that this election, I'm not going to get ahead of ourselves. Get out and vote. But I think Trump is going to win so big in 2024. They've sunk themselves. They've gone so far. The pendulum has swung so far, Lara, that there's there's no point of return other than Donald J. Trump. Yeah. I mean, I, I in so many ways, the Democrats have basically campaigned mm -hmm. for Donald Trump this election. I mean, they're, they're basically all you had to do is take a look at literally any decision Joe Biden has made, starting with the first one, shutting down the Keystone XL pipeline, 
of course, that took away our energy independence. It made us weaker as a country, made us poorer as a country, skyrocketing gas prices all across America. It allowed uh, Russia to invade Ukraine. It allowed Iran to enrich, enrich itself enough to support the Hamas terrorists going into Israel. That was a pretty bad decision. And then his first foreign policy decision, which was, of course, our exit from Afghanistan, the embarrassment to the United States that, that we saw there and the way that we departed. And, and we had service members killed unnecessarily and left billions and billions of dollars of equipment for the terrorists to use. Also a big problem for people. You go down the line and I can't think of anything positive that Joe Biden has done, quite frankly, except allow it to be what I feel is a very obvious win for Donald Trump. Because if anybody thinks that what's going on now is good, if you like what you see out there with the inflation and uh, gas prices and weakness on the world stage and, oh, the southern border, then I don't know what to tell you. This is you. You are then hell bent on destroying America and a vote for Joe Biden will ensure that. Southern border is a big problem, though, for the Democrats. We know that in both the Iowa caucuses and in the New Hampshire primaries, that was the main issue that people were voting on. They were very concerned with the southern border because we truly, Landon, have been infiltrated and just invaded by millions of people. They count 8 million, probably co closer to 12 or 13 million people that have ultimately come in this country. And you have these sanctuary cities and states like New York State, like New York City, and they have been absolutely destroyed by this. You cannot walk around the city of New York anymore and feel like it is the same place. I lived there for 16 years. It is unrecognizable in many places right now in New York because of the illegal immigrant situation. It is an absolute disaster. And it's funny because a lot of people are like, well, y'all voted for this. You voted to be a sanctuary city. You voted to be a sanctuary state. And now whenever they're seeing the consequences of it, it's obviously not great. There were four men uh, arrested for assaulting a police officer. If you haven't seen this video, look it up. It is horrific. They're literally there in uh, New York City kicking and punching this police officer. He's on the ground just trying to protect himself. And of course, after their arrest, they're in New York City, Landon. They don't get kept behind bars. They're released without bail. There will be no consequences ultimately for these guys. And one of them left court flipping off the cameras as though like, well, screw you guys. You can't do anything to me. I'm here in America. I'm in New York. I'm getting a, a, a place paid for right now. Oh, and on top of that, New York City is going to give me a thousand dollars a month for uh, a free uh, prepaid credit card. That's what's going on right now. It is insane. People are sick of it. And uh, I think this is also a big reason Donald Trump is going to win in 2024. I couldn't agree more. I, I can't imagine, you know, spending tens of millions of dollars with these prepaid debit cards, giving them to illegals who have already committed the crime of entering our country illegally. And, you know, there's battered women's shelters. There's our veterans. There's vulnerable people, uh, you know, like like the people that are trafficked every day in our country that need resources and help. And all of those systems are being depleted and overrun by this influx of illegal immigration. And these you know, virtue signaling hypocrites like Kathy Hochul, you know, say, come, come in, you know, we're bring me your tired and huddled, you know, masses and you know, quoting that. And then she says, actually, you know, we need to send the message that we're full. Turn around. Our hotels are full as women are getting raped in those hotels and we're getting reports of that. So, you know, I could just go on and on about this. It's disgusting. And I think until it personally affects these liberals living in these hell holes, they will continue voting for it until they see that their resources are depleted, that people are suffering in their communities and they're just going you know, down the dumps. Uh, I was, Carrie, looking online at some of the comments about these prepaid debit cards, um, it, which is just, it's completely outrageous. And this is one of the comments and I thought it was, it was it's so spot on for what's going on here. It says, one winter day, I fed a doe and her fawn some grain. The next day, she returned with three more deer, so I put out more corn. 
By a week later, however, more than 30 deer were hanging around eating my shrubs, fighting with, with each other, and waiting for feed. Learned my lesson. If the goal is to keep people from coming here illegally, obviously we could close our southern border. But if our president isn't willing to do that and our border czar, Kamala Harris, isn't willing to do that, then common sense would suggest that perhaps giving people money once they arrive in places like New York City, Carrie, not a great tactic because guess what? They're going to call all their friends back home and say, guess what I just got? A thousand dollars a month from the city of New York. This is going to cost $53 million for the city of New York. They already, Eric Adams has already said that uh, the three years worth of uh, illegal immigrants is going to cost $12 billion to the city of New York. And then you have Kathy Hochul, as Lena just mentioned, and Eric Adams, by the way, both doing a big U-turn on where they actually started. Give us your tired and huddled masses. Oh, wait, don't do that. Kathy Hochul actually said that it should be looked into to deport these guys who assaulted the cop. Hey, Kathy Hochul, you're the governor of the state of New York. You don't have to look into anything, babe. You could go ahead and deport these guys right now. Yeah, and you wanna know where they're headed, you guys? They're headed to my backyard. They are on a bus right now heading to California. So, hey, Greasy Gavin, what are you gonna do about it? Hey, Californians, what are you gonna do about it? We deserve protection as Americans, and I'm sorry, but this is not okay. And I, I have a solution for New York City. I think all those police officers should quit on the spot and say, you know what, courts, you know what, politicians, you guys handle this mess. See what happens then. I mean, it is actually, we're kind of on the verge of that, Carrie. Yeah. I feel like That's you correct. you look around, at who would want to be an NYPD officer? And by the way, think mm -hmm. back to just after September 11th, 2001. Think about people all over America and quite frankly, all over the world wearing NYPD insignia, FDNY insignia. That was like it. If you were an NYPD officer, man, oh. the ultimate respect to you because you yeah. had just gone through hell on 9-11. You were there for your fellow New Yorker, for your fellow American, for your fellow man and woman. This is, it's so sad to see what's happened because it was such a cool thing to be an, a New York City cop. And now they are basically telling anybody who would even consider doing this job, which is so hard, is yeah. so thankless, is so risky. Mm -hmm. You know what? Why would you bother? Why would yeah. you bother doing it anymore? Not only do you have these thugs out there beating you up who shouldn't even physically be in this country, if not for our, our president who allows them to violate our law and then give there no consequences for it. But on top of that, then you you see police officers who can't even do their job because they're afraid they're going to be labeled as racist. Mm -hmm. There are no protections for them anymore to make decisions as officers that there used to be. You know, it used to be that the law would look at them slightly differently and say, well, you know what? You were in this situation. This is a, a this is a tough job. We're going to give you the benefit of the doubt here. No more. So I don't blame these these men and women for not joining the police forces, not just in New York, but all over America. You have the same situation right now, by the way, with our United States military. The, the wokeness there is driving people away. These ads that suggest that like the most important thing is diversity in our United States military. No, Landon, the most important thing in our United States military is preparedness for battle. When Donald Trump was in office, it was peace through strength and nobody even tried anything because they were like, man, that's a serious guy. That's a serious military. I don't want to see what's on the other end of this. If I mess around here, I'm not even going to try it. And now uh, people are not, we're, you know, we're not having people join the military at the rate we even need. It is very frightening right now. And I don't think that it is, it's too much to say that if we don't change course in 2024, I don't really know what we get on the other side of this. If you get, we've only gotten three years of Joe Biden. We have another one to go. God bless us all. And then if we got four more years of this, could you even imagine, Landon? I can't. And, you know, my message to parents living in these liberal cities would be to get out because if we have another, you know, left-wing administration, it's going to get even further, uh, 
more, um, I mean, unlivable, uninhabitable. Uh, you're going to look at skyrocketing crime that we've never seen before. Um, really unsafe policies that are already starting being rolled out in the school systems. Um, I think it's actually going to be very dangerous. So, you know, I think people need to make plans if that would be the case. Yeah. And Carrie, you know, you look at the, the blue cities and, um, they have people doing what Lana just said. They're leaving. I left, I got out of New York city with my kids and, and we said, that's it. I can't raise a family here. You have a lot of people who have left, but the people who are still there who maybe can't afford to leave right now, uh, you know, places like Oakland, California, for example, we talked about this story last week. You had the blue cross and blue shield headquarters based in Oakland, California. And it's so bad there crime wise they are telling their employees, they sent out a memo to the entire company basically saying, hey, don't even go out for lunch. If you want to go get lunch, it's really not safe to do so. You need to stay inside, stay in the building, order your lunch in. Oh, and you need to do a ride share to get to and from work. Don't even walk. Don't think about it. It's not safe. We've seen the Whole Foods, like in the heart of San Francisco, mm -hmm. shut its doors, many of them all over the country in these horrible areas. Uh, recently... Walgreens shuttered quite a few of their stores as well. One particular store in Boston was closed down because of the surging crime. And of course, leave it to one of the squad members, Ayanna Presley, to call that carry racist. It's racist if Walgreens decided that they were tired of being robbed blind, that they were going to shut down a store because it's not profitable. I hate to break it to her. You have to have a profitable store. Otherwise, it's a business and it's not going to stay open. Here's what she says. When a Walgreens leaves a neighborhood, they disrupt the entire community and they take with them baby formula, diapers, asthma inhalers, life-saving medications, and of course, jobs. These closures are not arbitrary and they are not innocent. They are life-threatening acts of a racial and economic discrimination. Are you kidding me? How about let's stop the crime in these areas so that you keep these businesses open. The, the fa but this is the kind of thing that, that these folks in the squad do. They really don't have a whole lot to contribute to anything except to call whatever it might be racist, Carrie. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. And back to your, your point about, you know, getting out of California and places like California, New York, all these blue states. The problem, you guys, is that People are scared. You know, we're in an election year. Look at interest rates. People can't move right now. I talk to moms all right. day long and they're like, I can't wait to get out of California. Me personally as well. But there is so much instability right now and and quite frankly, fear. I mean, we people are afraid. They, they're seeing their grocery bills sky high. They can't send their kids to public schools because they're being indoctrinated. They're coming home saying, you know, I'm a cat today. I mean, the things that oh. are going you guys, it's so scary. And you know these things, both of you know these things. But my point is, is that we have to get Donald Trump elected in 2024. Like you both said, if we don't, things are going to get really real very fast. And we've already seen it now. So this is the most important thing in the next few months is getting this man reelected in 2024. We have so much on the line. We really do. And not the least of which, and I think probably the most important our, our kids, you know, yeah. we're here fighting for the future of this country, for my children, for your children, for generations to come because they deserve it and they rely on us to be their voices because they, they are too small and too powerless to have their own right now. It is up to us to look out for the kids. Landon, we're going to take a very quick break and then I want you to talk about your new documentary, The War on Children. Nobody move. We'll be right back. All right. I hate to interrupt the show, but if you know anything about me, you know that I take my health very seriously. In fact, with each year that passes, the goal of staying in my healthiest and best shape takes on more and more importance in my life. Feeling good is something that I don't take for granted, and it's become an essential goal for me every single day. That's why I always remember to take Balance of Nature supplements. Balance of Nature receives over a thousand success stories every single month. They have hundreds of thousands of customers who've purchased billions of capsules of their fruits and veggies over the past 20 years. Their products are 
gluten-free and non-GMO, and they contain no added sugars or synthetics. I think if you're looking for something to make you feel better naturally, you should definitely give Balance of Nature a try. In fact, you can order today. Check it all out on their website. Whether you order or call them direct, you can use promo code Lara to get a special offer of 35% off. You can call them at 800-246-8751 and make sure you use the discount code Lara, L-A-R-A, or you can order online at balanceofnature.com and use promo code Lara to get 35% off. If getting more serious about your health is something you've been wanting to commit to, I highly recommend that you check out Balance of Nature. All right, Landon, you've got The War on Children. It is out now. You can watch it on X. Um, tell us a little bit about this. I know you, you were on the show previously. You told us a, a little bit about it. I watched the trailer for it, and honestly, it's it's horrifying. Give people a preview as to what to expect with the war on children. Absolutely. Well, up until now, we've all seen these isolated clips of sexually explicit drag shows for kids or sex changes on minors or um, all the crazy porn in schools or the medicalization of uh, you know children being uh, able to have consent to medical procedures without their parents' consent. So when you put all of those things together, there is a war on children, and we prove that in this film. And it's not hyperbole, it's not our opinion. We literally use facts and the leftist's own words um, and policies to illustrate and connect the dots for people. And up until now, there's been so much censorship with all of these clips going around that, you know, you've had that deniability saying, oh, that's not really happening, like CNN has said. But when you watch this film, and I encourage every parent to watch this in America, it is un undeniable. And I would also encourage people to gift the film for people who can't afford to watch it uh, so that we can continue making films like this. Yeah, there were a couple parts in the the trailer that really grabbed me and really stood out to me. One of them, I think it's at the very beginning, there's a, a girl, a detransitioned girl, and she says, I didn't even know that transitioning was an option until I saw it on TikTok. Now, we know TikTok is the number one used social media site for the youth in this country. There is no doubt. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting is that you guys actually, Landon, sat down with a, a drag queen uh, and had a conversation. What was that like? Oh, it was really interesting. And going into it, um, I told my husband, you know, let me take the lead on these questions because in our experience dealing with people uh, as part of this community, they're very defensive, very angry, and oftentimes very violent. And my husband's a lot bigger than me. And so I said, you just sit back, you know, let let me, I'm small, um, talk to this man who's much bigger than me. I mean, his fake breasts are probably bigger than my head. And I was sitting across from him and I'm just asking questions. I am not insulting him. I'm not attacking his identity, not doing any of these things, just asking questions. And um, this this interview was just, so illuminating. I mean, in the moment, it was almost unbelievable because maybe I was a little naive going into it thinking that he would sit here with a real person and say, you know what? Yeah, I, I'm, I do drag, but I'm not okay with this. You know, we would give him an example of this sexually explicit drag show and said, it's not one, it's not two. There's so many, I could give you countless examples. Could you denounce one? And he couldn't do it. And this, it, this just goes to show that this is a religion and they will defend it to the death because they don't want to be on the receiving end of the left and their hate campaign when they admit that what they're doing to kids is wrong. And, and honestly, I, I really don't care if you're a grown man and you want to dress up as a woman and you want to do, honey, you do you. That's great for you. What people have a problem with, of course, Carrie, is whenever it infiltrates the kids, when it, you see children brought to drag shows, when they have drag queen story hour, or it's somehow part of, of like schools and no, that is unacceptable. This is, this is about sexuality. It's about sex. It should always leave the kids out of it. Do, if you want to call yourself a dog or a cat, you go right ahead, but leave the kids out of it. And it is a problem and it is affecting the kids. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's problematic in places like Montana, where if you do not confirm your child's identity, their, their perceived identity, gender identity, 
you could lose custody of your child. It actually happened um, to a family. Their 14-year-old daughter, I guess, wanted to identify as a boy and had threatened suicide at school. So the school called Child Protective Services. CPS showed up at this house and basically was like, listen, we have determined that the best thing for your daughter is to allow her to transition into a boy. And that's what's prescribed here. And the parents were like, yeah, no, that's not going to work for us. We're not going to allow that. And they took the custody of that daughter away from her parents because they would not go along with what Child Protective Services was saying. It is absolutely terrifying right now. I am just grateful that my children are young enough that they have not yet been exposed to this. And thank goodness for people doing things out there and exposing it like Landon is to at least allow us to understand what's going on and be able to try and protect our children. This stuff is horrifying, Carrie. Yeah, it really is. And Landon, you're absolutely right. This is the war on children. If they can't dismember them in the womb, what do they do? They, they dismember them outside of the womb. This is a religion. It is, I've been saying it for a long time. This is a cult, the gender ideology cult. They want your children. That's why Planned Parenthood now is shifting from abortion. They're still doing abortions, but now they are the number one supplier for your kids' sex change. They want your kids they want their, their minds. They are indoctrinating them not only in schools, but on TikTok. So parents, you better wake up and you better, you better look at what your kids are looking at on their phones. Don't just you know give them a phone and then think that, oh, okay, my job is done. No, your job has just begun if you give them a phone. You better be monitoring what they're doing and what they're looking at. And I'm all about solutions. So here in California, if you're, if you're listening from California, go to www.protectkidscalifornia.com. We're collecting signatures. We want to do something about it. And I believe, I'm going to say something crazy right now. I think uh -oh. Trump is going to win California. I really do. Wow. I really do. And I'm going to call that now because people here are done. This is bipartisan. This bill is was presented by Democrat mothers. Really? That. Wow. Yeah. They're done. They're fed up. Their kids are being indoctrinated by this stuff. These are registered Democrat moms that are saying, stop shoving it down our kids' throats. Their kids are being transitioned. This yeah, and to stop all of this stuff. It, the problem too is that so, so much of this stuff is is irreversible. Yeah. Once once you go down that path and you've taken hormone blockers or hormone therapy or cut parts of your body off, yeah. you can't come back from that and be the same. Landon, uh, you you interviewed a detransition girl in your documentary, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I mean, what does she say about that? I, I can't imagine. She, I, I would imagine these kids must be so angry with anyone who allowed them to do such a thing. I mean, when you watch this interview, it's so, you know, undeniable to see the pain and trauma um, and vulnerability that a child is still sitting there. A child who was, you know, emotionally, spiritually, physically stunted uh, by irresponsible, evil adults with an agenda. And she's not the only one, you know, she had a double mastectomy the day after her 13th birthday, oh, but oh, you know, my organization represents a lot of detransitioners and the story is usually the same. There's some sexual trauma in the past. Um, a lot of them are on the spectrum. Uh, there's some other comorbidity and, and the statistics and real science do bear that out. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of resources on my organization's uh, website, freedomforever.us, that people want to really learn about the realities of, you know, gender affirmative care, of how they're destroying the lives of children. I would encourage people to to look at that. Well, I'll tell you what, this is, um, it is really scary stuff. And Landon, I want to say thank you for mm -hmm. highlighting it. Thank you for for attempting to to do something about it. And Carrie, right back at you for trying to do something out there in California. I love the prediction, by the way. i got to tell you something. Could you imagine if Donald Trump wins California? Just imagine the horror on the, the left. Imagine if you thought 2016, ladies and gentlemen, was a spectacle with the lady in the street. That, ah, that lady, remember her? Yes. The, Clinton, the Clinton camp uh, over at the Javits Center. That whole scene. Holy Toledo. Batten down the hatches, folks, if Donald Trump wins the state of California. 
it's it's happened in the past a long time ago, but um, man, I'll, then I guess we better get out to California, Carrie. We better get campaigning out there if we're going to do that. Before yeah. we go today, I just want to talk about something very important, a diaper spa. Ladies, you may not have heard about this. Um, it turns out that if you happen to find yourself in the state of New Hampshire, I was just there and I'm sort of upset that I am only learning about a diaper spa now. There is a place that opened up for what this uh, person who opened it calls an overlooked population. This is the ABDL population, adult baby diaper lovers population. Can't imagine they're they're that big, but big enough for a spa to open where you can pay $200 a session to go in and literally be put in a diaper and treated like a baby. Now, Landon... I don't, I don't have any problem with people doing this. Apparently, it raised some eyebrows because this property was connected to a children's like park playground area. Um, I, I just this this is a this is a, a little bit too much for me. Anyone who's doing things like this, I generally assume probably has some sort of a mental issue. If you're going to a place like this and you like to be in a diaper, and my question is when these people are in diapers, are they actually using them or is it just for show? What do you think, Landon? What do you think about a diaper spa? Would you visit? Well, unfortunately, um, I know a thing or two about this community because oh. there's a lot of pedophiles that are in this community um, mm -hmm. really? who prey on children. And so I would challenge people to think, you know, we, we don't really want to know what goes in adults' bedrooms. Like, we don't care. Right. But anytime an adult is fetishizing childlike paraphernalia, babies, children, little teddy bears, that is a sign of a mental health issue. And if, go, if yeah. it goes unaddressed, that, that is a pipeline of pedophilia because let me tell you, pedophiles do this kind of role play. They, they, really? they want to act out their sick sexual simulation. So it is not harmless, it's not benign, it's not some sort of kink. It is a sign of pedophilia. Wow. I mean, it is, it's, I've never heard of such a thing. And the fact that this person opened it, I assume it means that this individual thinks that there are enough people carry in this area that they have a, they're going to have a, a robust business for such a thing. There is a petition right now to shut it down by uh, obviously a lot of concerned parents in the area, because I guess like Landon saying, perhaps this is sort of a, a gateway of sorts to pedophilia or something, something maybe really disgusting like that. I don't know. What do you think about it, Carrie? Yeah, I mean, here's the problem, you guys, as, as conservatives, you know, we give them an inch and what do they do? They take 10 miles. Once we start redefining words, it's, it's fair game for them. And so when you give them that little tiny inch, they, they run with it. And then we as conservatives are always playing defense. It's time we conservatives play offense and say, absolutely not. There should be thousands of people at that place shutting it down by the end of the day today. I and can't, this, yeah, this, I can't this, imagine it's going to survive the, the petition because I think this entire community is probably like, eh, not, not really for us around hey, here. Landon, where do you draw the line, you guys? I mean, I was joking the other day. I mean, this is not a joke, but kind of. I'm like, hey, honey, you know, my husband played 10 years in the NFL. I'm like, why don't you just identify as a 10 year old and then go play with Brody on his football team? I mean, if we can, if we can just say I am a woman and I just, you know, create that in my mind, why can't you say you identify as a 10 year old? That's what's happening. You guys, we're going to start seeing this stuff. You just saw the other day, the guy in Canada that's identifying as, as a 13 year old little girl, right? Is that right? Oh my gosh. It's like showering with these girls. I mean, we laugh, but you guys, I'm serious. We give them one inch they will run with it. And before you know it, this stuff will be happening to a city near you. This is not crazy California. This is New Hampshire. This is Montana, the 14 year old girl, Montana out of all places. This is not blue cities, right? It's Tennessee, where you live, Landon, things are going on all across this nation. And we as conservatives need to step up and start being on offense and stop playing defense time and time again. We're going to lose our country and lose our kids. Yeah, it is. Uh, it some of this stuff is is just a, a little crazy, and I think for even people who are like, "Oh, I really don't care," you hear about some things, and you're like, "That's 
this is you're right. It's a slippery slope with stuff. Um, I, I would say, especially with losing custody of your child, if you don't affirm their gender when you gave birth to that child and you know exactly what their gender is, it really is a is a very weird time. And you know, you think back to even. 30 years ago or so, if someone came up and said, I'm identifying as a dog, people would be like, get the hell out of here. You're crazy, dude. Like, no, no, we're good. But somehow we've, we've gotten, we've gotten very lost and we're going to rein it back in. I believe on November 5th of this year, when people are going to ha- speak with their vote and say enough is enough, we want our country back. We want our kids back. We want our respect back on the world stage and they're going to vote for Donald J. Trump. Um, Landon and Carrie, thank you both so much for joining us here on The Right View. As always, you both are amazing. To everybody at home, thank you for joining us. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. And we will see you back here next time for more of The Right View. And I won't back down. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it. My name is Laura Trump and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. If you go to mypillow.com today, and use promo code TRUMP, again, promo code TRUMP, you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America.